Hello everyone, welcome back to AS Biology with Dr. Demi. I am Dr. Demi and in today's video I will take you through the second half of the sixth chapter of the AS Biology syllabus. So if you've not watched the preceding video to this one, please do so. That is chapter 6.1, DNA replication. In this video, we're simply going to discuss protein synthesis in very short detail, but you would require information from DNA replication to be able to understand this video in detail. Okay, so let's get into it. When we speak about DNA replication, one of the reasons why DNA replicates is because the DNA is trying to make copies of itself so that when the cells divide, each cell has the exact same copy of DNA, the same number of genes, same number of nucleotides, and so on and so forth. But that is not the only thing DNA is used for. DNA is also responsible for ensuring that we make proteins from our DNA. So our DNA carries our genetic code, which in turn determines which proteins we will be able to make. So the general sequence through which this happens, I'm just going to use a pen over here, a red pen, um, and write at the bottom here. The general sequence through which this happens is that we go from DNA, um, we go to RNA, and then we go to protein, right? And um, it's very important to remember the sequence because it helps you um, when you're trying to decode genetic information or a DNA sequence. Now, you might be wondering why this table is here. What exactly is the essence of this table? This table is very important because it tells us what the protein or what amino acid we are coding for. Now, if you remember from biological molecules in chapter two, we said proteins are made from amino acids. Well, if you want to take this from DNA to RNA to protein, what you would really see is that we go from DNA to RNA. RNA then gives us a sequence of amino acids, which we can then take as a polypeptide chain and fold in order to make a protein. So when we get into this later on, I will tell you how it works or how this table works, but I'm just introducing it to you so that you are aware of what it is. Also, it is important to know that amino acids are usually in triplet codes. So it means that they are coded for by three nucleotide bases. If you look here, for example, this is phenyl alanine. Phenyl alanine is coded for by U, U, U. Um, and you also have leucine, which can then be CUU, CUC, CUA, CUG. If there is a mutation in any of these triplet codes, that can result in your amino acid um, being coded for differently. In other words, it can result in a different amino acid and change the shape of the protein. Now, a good place where such a mutation occurs is in sickle cell anemia. In sickle cell anemia, there is a substitution that causes the triplet code to change from CTT to CAT. Now, CTT codes for the amino acid glutamine, while CAT codes for valine. Valine is a hydrophobic amino acid, which means that it tries to avoid water as much as possible. That is why sickle celled red blood cells, um, sickle shaped red blood cells, rather, have this shape that they've got because they are trying to avoid the water environment. Normal red blood cells have glutamine, which is a hydrophilic amino acid, so they relate very well with the water environment. So when the amino acid changes um, due to a mutation, which is something that you will learn more about in your A-level um, syllabus, when the amino acid changes due to a mutation, that can result in dire health consequences for the person. Okay, now let's get into protein synthesis in detail. Protein synthesis happens in two stages. We have transcription and we have translation. Now, if you've ever done any form of editing, proofreading, and all of those kinds of services, you will be aware that transcription is simply taking one information from one form to the other, or rather taking information from one form to the other. In this case, what happens in transcription is that the DNA will unwind in the nucleus and it will unzip. So if you look at this image over here, you can see that we have two strands of DNA. This is strand one. I'm just going to draw a little circle around it. Here's one strand. And over here, we have another strand. 
so the dna will unwind and then it will also unzip itself the reason why it does this is first of all you must bear in mind that dna cannot leave the nucleus it always stays in the nucleus of the cell it doesn't go around you know traveling throughout the body it stays within the nucleus so if we are going to get the information the dna is carrying in order to make a protein there has to be something that goes into the nucleus to copy the dna and bring out that information from the nucleus that is the role of the enzyme rna polymerase rna polymerase just like dna polymerase tries to make an rna copy from the dna strand now remember that when we learned about dna replication we spoke about how in dna you don't have timing which is coded for as t instead you have uracil so you will see here on the rna transcript which is this over here that i'm circling right now um, that there is no timing instead we have a binds to u t would bind to a that's t from the dna g would bind to c a doesn't bind to t for rna it rather binds to u and so rna polymerase in this manner makes a copy of the dna strand once that copy has been made we call that copy then the mrna which is called the messenger rna in other words it is carrying the message that the dna codes for and it is going to leave the nucleus the messenger rna or mrna leaves the nucleus through the nuclear envelope and it enters the cytoplasm once it gets into the cytoplasm it will find there that they are what we call the tRNA molecules tRNA stands for transfer RNA it will also find amino acid molecules and what it will see which is what we will discuss on the next slide is that the transfer RNA transfers the amino acids that correspond to the mRNA and we're going to see how that works so don't stress too much if this is not clear on this um, particular slide okay so transcription is simply copying the dna inside the nucleus and taking that information out in the form of messenger rna into the cytoplasm now translation which is the other part of protein synthesis is a little bit different the mrna that's the messenger rna carrying the information from the dna goes out of the nucleus um, enters the cytoplasm and it binds to a ribosome so this um, green structure over here is a ribosome this one where I've just shaded a little weird um, shape as a ribosome. Now, remember that in chapter one, when you were learning about the cells and the different organelles, we said that the ribosomes are the site for protein synthesis. So you're now going to see how that works. So the mRNA would come here and it would bind to the ribosome. And what happens is, first of all, six units of the mRNA would be exposed. Now, remember that with RNA, we read in triplet codes just like i said to you at the beginning so over here we just i'm just going to draw lines here so that you can see that we are reading in triplets so in threes that is we're reading this in threes good so it's actually even that's awesome so we're reading in threes over here and what you will see here is that the transfer rna carries its own set of codons um, right at the bottom but if you notice besides carrying its own set of codons at the bottom it also carries amino acids at the top so here is how translation works what the transfer rna would do is that it would read the triplet code on the messenger rna so let's use this part here that has not um, been read this part says gau What's G going to bind to if it if it's still forming RNA? G is going to bind to C. A is going to bind to U, and U is going to bind to A. So over here, this is CUA. What also happens is that the transfer RNA will look for the amino acid sequence. So it means that it looks for the amino acid that is coded for, for example, by GAU. That amino acid will be on top of the transfer RNA. So if we were to draw our own transfer RNA as that, then let's say the amino acid it codes for is serine, then this would be carrying serine on top of it over here. Okay, so that's serine. Then it comes here and it reads UCA, and so that means A binds again to U, um, C binds to G, and U binds to A. Yeah, so this again is our transfer RNA carrying those three codons, and we call them anticodons. 
And on top of that, let's say that the amino acid on top is called leucine. So leucine comes here. By the way, these are not the correct triplet codes for the amino acids. I'm just using this as an example. So now leucine is carried by this transfer RNA molecule here. What will then happen between leucine and serine is that there will be a peptide bond. Can you see that? So it means that they've sort of formed a chain and it goes on like that. So you can see over here, this is GCA or ACG and A binds to U as shown in the image, C binds to G and G binds to C. And the transfer RNA is carrying the amino acid that is coded for by ACG and that amino acid again then attaches to the next group. And as this goes on and on and on, you will notice that the amino acids at the top are beginning to form a chain. Now remember when we discussed uh, protein structure, we said that the primary structure of a protein is simply the sequence of amino acids. That means that this polypeptide chain that we would have at the end of this translation process would simply be the primary structure of the protein. So if you look up over here, you can see that there is a chain that's forming of different amino acids being attached to each other through peptide bonds. And that simply means that we are forming the primary structure of the protein. Something important to know is that translation always starts with a triplet codon of AUG. AUG codes for methionine. Um, I'm not sure I'll be able to spell that um, very easily here. It codes for methionine and methionine simply means start. There are also three stop codons which are UAA, UAC and UGA but you'll be able to see these on the next slide. So again, just to look over it again, um, just want to uh, make sure that the understanding is well cemented. Let's say, for example, we have a DNA sequence of, um, let's say, G, A, T, um, and we also have, let's say, A, T, T, and we also have C, A, T. Okay. Of course, this is fictional DNA, so um, we're not saying this is real DNA. It doesn't code for anything. What the mRNA would be when RNA polymerase goes into the nucleus to copy this section of the DNA, it would copy G would bind to C, A would bind to U, and T would bind to A. And it goes on like that. A binds to U, T binds to A, and T again binds to A. And then here we have G and uh, we have U binding to A and then we have A binding to T. So this now over here is a triplet code, um, is a section rather of the mRNA. This is messenger RNA. This messenger RNA then goes out of the nucleus and it binds to the ribosome. When it binds to the ribosome, the transfer RNA will bring the complementary nucleotide bases that will attach to these. So the transfer RNA would come here and it would say, okay, this is going to be G, U binds to A, and A binds to U. Always remember that when you're dealing with RNA, A always binds to U. When you're dealing with DNA, A always binds to T. And then you come here and you have U and this is going to be A um, and this would be U, U. A, U, U. And this here would be C, this would be A, and this would be another U. So this is what our transfer RNA is carrying and we call these the anticodons. Yeah, these are the anticodons and we have these is our triplet codon for the amino acid. These over here are our triplet codons. These are our anticodons. So the anticodons here are just um, simply to help the transfer RNA bring the right amino acid. So if we know what amino acid CUA codes for, um, so let's assume that that is phenylalanine, then we would have phenylalanine at the top of the transfer RNA. And let's say UAA codes for, um, let's say leucine, then this would become leucine over here. And let's say the next one is threonine, and then that becomes threonine over there. And as we go on, we simply form a chain of amino acids, which can then be folded to form a functional protein later on. 
This is to show you, um, and this is where the slide ends, to show you how to read the triplet codon table. So if you want to know what amino acid your um, strand is coding for, so let's say we give you a, you're given a string of RNA nucleotide bases in the exam and you're told, well, what would the, be the sequence of the amino acids? The first thing you have to notice here with this table is that it says here, first base of the codon here at the um, on the left, on the right it says second it says second base of the codon and on the I'm sorry on top it says second base and on the right it says third base so now let's say your first base is c so your triplet code let's say it's c um, starts with c so that means over here you're dealing with something that's in this section of the table i'm just going to draw an arrow you're dealing with this section of the table okay um, this over here, the second block, if you will. Now, let's say that the second sequence is A, um, the second base rather is A. So it means that A, because A is over here, then that means you're dealing somewhere in this box. Do you understand that? Hopefully you do. Um, <laughs> and then let's say the third codon is another C. So now we are dealing with C, and remember we have to come in here, C A C is what we're dealing with and CAC codes, codes for histidine so that is an amino acid um, I'm going to do another example just so you understand it if your first codon so let's say we want to check a codon that is GCA so our first codon is G over here okay so we know that we are dealing somewhere here at the bottom um, of the of the table so that's G and then our second codon is a C so you simply know that your amino acid is definitely somewhere here and your third codon is A so you have to come here and see fortunately all of these four codons code for alanine so we know that the amino acid will be alanine if you have any questions about how to do this please feel free to reach out to me but this is the end of protein synthesis i hope that it has helped you revise if you still feel like you're not that confident with protein synthesis please post a comment in the section um please post a question in the comments and i will get back to you as soon as possible enjoy your day have a good time goodbye